So good morning and uh, welcome to final assembly. Um, this is a very different final assembly of course. Here I am in an empty room whilst we run through a few aspects of this term. Um, I really will miss the chance to share this occasion with you in person. It's one of my favourites where we're sort of all together looking back over the term, enjoying all the things that we have done um, collectively and individually. But there's a real sense in my mind at final assembly of this is the home team, well done us, this is what we've achieved, time for a bit of a rest. So I'm going to miss that and it may well be um, a little bit dry with me simply talking, but as I said, it's important for us to reflect a little and remind ourselves about some of the things we have done in the last 10 weeks or so, so here goes. Um, I do hope you know that we have been so impressed with how you have all responded to the need to keep your learning going when at home. Um, I've seen three prep year groups so far and of course we've got uh, six, seven and eight coming up, year six this afternoon and then seven and eight tomorrow. So uh, I'm looking forward to saying again to, to, to you in person how well you have done. But thank you to all of you for your efforts, for your energy, for your engagement um, with your teachers and with the challenges we've set you. It really has been uh, um, terrific. So well done. Um, as usual, I will go in roughly alphabetical order and I've got some notes from various uh, people to help me. Um, so we start with art and uh, I'd like to say of um, how much fantastic work I think has been done. Um, uh, you've been creative, you've used your ingenuity, uh, there are so many things at home that you've brought into your art as well as the obvious pen, pencil, paper, um, colours, crayons, paints and the like, but it's been pretty impressive to see what you've used. Um, I've shown some of it in assemblies, there have been bits and pieces in uh, the newsletter each week, some on Twitter, on other social media, but I think it's fair to say that what we've seen has only been the tip of the iceberg of what you collectively have produced. There has been masses going on. Miss P would like to give um, arts colours, uh, so just to make it clear, we have arts colours that we award for the likes of music, drama, DT and of course art. Um, and she would like to award Arts Colours for Art to Darcy Tomlinson for her efforts and contributions during the Specialist Art Group and during our weekly art lessons. We shall all miss her upbeat personality and singing while she works. To Sid Dorse, Poppy Chedzoy, Eugene Lowe and Oscar Mack for their continued and well thought out, constructed and presented outcomes for art assignments during lockdown. Their efforts have been a shining example to their peers and they have demonstrated some lovely ideas and use of materials. Also to Archie Ware for showing such a great interest during the lockdown work, for taking the opportunity to enjoy exploring projects set online and having a really good go at them all. I have been thrilled to see this great response and attitude and do hope this motivates him to keep engaging in this way with the creative subjects in general at his senior school. That's a really nice reason to get your arts colours, Archie, well done. Um, we tend to save arts colours, she says, for those in year eight, but Miss P wants to mention Darcy Coburn and Willow Simpson in year seven for their superb efforts, creating an amazing array and an amazing number of art pieces independently, working in a broad range of media in response to the art assignments set during lockdown, creating pieces for their own enjoyment and experimentation and as part of the new specialist art group activities. They are really deserving of this mention. Onto DT, and here again I think we have seen a such incredible application from so many of you and a real tenacity to see a project through, to finesse your model. Um, the Bridge Challenge was spectacularly fought out in a very collegiate way as well as a competition. Uh, Mr Stannett has provided a huge number of videos to encourage you and a myriad of responses as you problem solve, improve your designs and of course that's also included setting about your culinary creations and it's been terrific to see so many of you, both boys and girls, in the kitchen. You know how I feel about that, a really good life skill. Well done, and I hope that it doesn't stop once lockdown is lifted and we're back to uh, uh, school here next term. Do get home and get yourself in the kitchen at the end of each day. Um, this again is an area, I would say, where uh, the majority of us have only really seen um, the tip of that iceberg I keep mentioning. There's an enormous amount of work being going on unseen um, from most of our eyes and it's really fantastic that you have contributed so much. On to drama. Uh, this term, um, many of you have been tucking into Mrs Curl's assignments and another, uh, another person who's enticed you into action, um, whether it be acting, thinking about staging, thinking about costume, plot setting, um, characterization, these songologues that she has um, 
got you to, to, to perform, and lots of other marvellous manifestations. Um, Mrs. Curl would write to, uh, would, has written to me and would say, a special mention to these children in each year group who have been fantastic at keeping up their drama work as well as their academics and have produced some amazing work and lots of HMCs. In year three, well done to Molly, Jinesh, Pippa, Amelia and Danning. In year four, well done to Alice, Mabel, Isabella and James. Year five, to Tilly, Theo and Lizzie. In year six, to Grace, Julian, Jack and Sylvie. In year seven, well done to Ella, Madeline and Kate. And in year eight, well done to Eugene, Poppy and Sid. She wants to mention also year four um, and the play Ahmed and the Feather Girl. Please say a huge well done to all of our year four who individually filmed their own parts in the presentation of the book to enable us to produce a year four production. Traditionally, the year four production is outside and there was no difference this year as many of the film clips were filmed in the gardens and fields with costumes, with props, wonderful characterizations and use of voice. A hard working group of children in year four who were determined that a play would go on. So well done to all of you in year four. And I do believe that the um, bits and pieces you've, you've filmed there are in the final splicing stages. So um, I hope that you get to see it before long. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing that when it is ready. Um, also under drama, um, we should know by now that, uh, that, that uh, the tech behind it, the people looking after lights and so on and the props is a really crucial part to make sure that a play goes well. So Mrs. Curl and Mr. Ayres want to mention three year eight for their commitment and professionalism behind the scenes when it came to performances and involvement in the stage crew hobby that goes on even when plays are not happening. So they want to say a really big thank you and well done to Neve Waite, Sophie Pinckney and Daisy Thompson. Music. Now I've said before how important music is to our lives. Um, it's almost always there and it's certainly often linked to the memories that we have and to emotions that we feel. And I'm so grateful to you all who have, through Mr DJ and uh, in, in your own time and your own works, continued to provide musical contributions to our school life. Uh, whilst we've been away from each other. Um, I'll talk a little more on that later, but for now, very well done to all of you who have kept your music going um, during this time. And I'm looking forward to the concert tomorrow evening. Um, I think there's something doubly special, I don't know about you, but uh, certainly when I've seen these collections of you coming together on the screen, I think there's something doubly special, special about seeing the collective efforts, knowing that you've actually done them individually in isolation in your own rooms. So well done for keeping that going. Um, Mr. DJ would like to add um, um, arts colours for music this term to Eugene Lowe. Eugene, you've been prolific in the creation of your musical interludes this term, so thank you and very well done. And do remember that these arts colours that are being awarded are ones for, for, for this term, and we've had others who have had arts colours um, in the first term of the year and indeed at Easter. Um, before I move on from this sort of section, um, we must mention the Arts Awards challenges. Um, and before going on to, to talk to you about what the children have done, um, what you have done, um, firstly a very big thank you to Mrs Curl, who has been ably supported by Miss P, Mr DJ and Mr Stannett. Um, together they created the concept of the Arts Awards challenges and of course created the challenges that lie within it. Um, Mrs Curl would write that this activity has been entered by a large number of children who have had great fun completing challenges in art, DT, music and drama. Um, there are six of each of those and so that makes 24 in all. It's been brilliant seeing their work and watching their film clips and many have, uh, ha have achieved their bronze awards. So most who entered have achieved bronze and just over. Um, speeding along at the last minute is Francesca Lloyd, who is now heading towards her silver to join others who have got their silver awards. Um, there are two who have achieved gold, and remember that'll be 18 of the 24. Uh, Molly Steedman has reached 18, and Danning Zhang has completed 22. Well, good luck, Danning, with maybe getting the other two done in time to complete the full set. Uh, Mrs Curl would say that for Year 3 children, the, 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 the work of these two has been exceptional, and they are full of confidence in the arts. And then she would like to say, please present an award to Annie Dares-Jones, who completed all 24 challenges and has received a platinum award. Annie's work has been outstanding in all the arts challenges and she has grown in confidence over the weeks. Very well done, Annie. I'll um, try to drop in a bit of, of a five-minute puppet show that she made. I think that's probably one of her 
most fun pieces that she did of the 24, a fantastic puppet show she made. So I'll give you a little clip of that. He quickly unsheathed his sword, held it high and said, I am Sir Ivan, defender of this realm, and I am going to slice your head off. The sea monster sobbed. Please don't chop my head off. I'm just a poor, lonely sea monster. Why does everyone to decapitate me? So people counsel next. And, well, what a year it's been, writes Mrs Foster. And thank you, Mrs Foster, for overseeing all the activity of the Pupil Council uh, from its um, election process back in September all the way through the events that they have been overseeing. She goes on to write, The Pupil Council started off the year with discussions about food and play equipment, then moved to caring for others in the wider community with the Christmas Sparkle Project. It was lovely to see all the new toys, games and books brought to the Pemberton Room to be collected and wrapped for children in Taunton and the surrounding area. Children who would not normally get presents at Christmas time benefited from your generosity. We started 2020 with a heartfelt talk given by Darcy in Year 8, who explained how the Parkinson's UK local charity has been an important support to her family. The Pupil Council invited the chair of Parkinson's UK Taunton into school to give an assembly. We were in the process of gearing up for our fancy dress netball and hockey when COVID-19 struck the world. The Just Giving page had already received donations and we plan to offer the Fancy Dress fundraising in the next academic year as we want to honour our commitment to this very important charity. During the lockdown, the Pupil Council met virtually and Mr Chippendale kindly brought us into the Woodard Room. It was lovely seeing and hearing the children and I was impressed how they spoke cogently and sensitively about the different and important topics of virtual schooling. One such idea was bringing forward more independent learning time in the library when we are back in school. The pupils really embrace that aspect of our current learning environment, the time to read, explore, think and research independently. Also, there was an even greater awareness of the environment and nature. Now, I would say that the King's Hall pupils have always been aware of caring for the environment, but now there is a heightened sense of wildlife and the beauty of nature. We have become even more mindful of the world around us, and the Pupil Council expressed a wish to do some fundraising for nature charities next year. While we think about the future, it's important to offer our gratitude and sincere, sincere thanks to the current Pupil Council who worked together from September to listen, plan, organise and help support Kings Hall and the local community. We were together both in school and in the virtual meeting room, but the important point is that we were together, bringing together all year groups and their thoughts, ideas and hopes. So Mrs Foster and me and the rest of the school would like to say thank you to, in year three, uh, Zach Gompels and uh, uh, Charlotte Scott. In year four, Tilly Hill and Muriel Foster. In year five, Camilla Francois and Lizzie Rowe. In year six, Julian Barnes, George Noble and Toby Burrell. In year seven, Monique Dutoy, Monty Lindsay Smith, Wilf Gosling, Darcy Coburn and Herbert Yu. And in year eight, Huckleberry Halliday, Edward Luxton and Gabriel Folloranso. Those are all the, um, the reps for the tutor groups that we've had in the school. And uh, a great big thank you to Andrew Venn, who took on the role of Pupil Council Chairman with kindness, humour and a real interest in those around him. Well done, young man. Right, on to sport. <clears throat> and of course the sport's been incredibly different this term. Uh, the usual um, rotation of matches, of events, of, of house matches and the like uh, haven't been able to happen. But I do know that you have been incredibly active, incredibly involved in uh, what Mr Halls has put out there, either on Teams or um, through Twitter. Um, he very quickly set up the hashtag COVID19FIT uh, idea and through that there have been all sorts of little challenges because remember going for a walk, um, doing exercise as well, sitting down, um, all sorts of things count towards your health and your fitness, not just actually going out and running a marathon all the time or cycling for 17 hours. Um, all sorts of activity is important and Mr Halls has offered some really intriguing uh, ways to keep you moving. So the hashtag COVID19FIT is one aspect of what he's done, but then also the um, King's Hall Club on Strava, and that's widened out into a King's School Strava Club. Strava is, uh, is, is, is obviously measuring mainly your swimming, running and cycling, um, but that's been a really um, good way of pooling what you've been up to. So Mr Halls and uh, Mrs McDee wanted to make some acknowledgements of people in various year groups who have made particular progress or have achieved highly in those two areas. So that's the COVID-19 fit um, activities that the school has set up, but then also those who have been contributing to Strava. And that's not all of you, and that's completely fine. But for those who have, 
um, there are a few mentions here. So in year three for the girls, in the COVID-19 fit, well done to Augusta Daniel for her achievements on all of those little activities that have been set to you. In year four for COVID-19 fit, um, Isabella Argles, well done for the progress you have made and for achievement Helen Ames. And for the Strava in year four, Alice Lang's made terrific progress and well done to Tilly Hill for um, her, her achievements with the Strava measurements. In year five, Amy Wilkinson for achievement and for Strava, Camila Francois for progress and Dasha Reisner for achievement. Into year six, with the COVID-19 fit, the progress, mentioned to Maisie Henderson and for achievement, well done Lulu Bell, and for Strava in year six, the progress to Shania Venning and for achievement, Faith Hammond. In year seven, uh, COVID-19 fit, progress, well done to Willow Simpson and for achievement, well done Katie Rowe. And with the Strava in year seven, Isabel Nobles made terrific progress and Darcy Coburn uh, gets the achievement mention. Into year eight, uh, for the COVID-19 fit, Sid Dorse, has made terrific progress and Sophie Pinkney for achievement in committing to most of the activities and getting them all done and with the Strava Ruby Beresford has got increasingly involved and for achievement on the Strava well done to Eve Rowe. So I hope that's making some kind of a sense as a sort of a progress and achievement for the two strands that we have put out there that is um, activities that Mr Halls and Mrs McDee have set up for you and then just your general measurement on Strava. On to the boys for the COVID-19 fit in year three, well done to Woody Gosling, and for Strava, well done to Felix Bennett. Both of you obviously getting very actively involved out there. In year four for the COVID-19 fit, the progress to Theo Jones and achievement to Wilbur Mack. For Strava, progress to Theo Hammond and achievement to James White. In year five, COVID-19 fit, progress to Nick Watson, and achievement to Theo Lamy, and in the Strava, progress to Rex Thomas, and achievement to James Lang. In year six, COVID-19 fit progress, well done George Noble, and achievement Barnaby Mack. In uh, the Strava section, progress to Noah Jones, and achievement to Theo Bennett. Um, in year seven, COVID-19 fit progress to Wilf Gosling, and the achievement to Alex Mott and in the Strava, progress to Ollie Goldby and achievement to Sam Hawkins. In year eight, COVID-19 fit progress for Rudy Reisner and achievement to Oscar Mack and for the Strava, progress to Andrew Venn and achievement to Cameron Wallace. Now Cameron, as uh, you may know, is, is a very active chap um, and uh, it was a little while ago that Mr Halls introduced Parkrun to the school and I hope you're very familiar with the concept that actually it's about the number of times you take part not necessarily how fast you run it. Of course, you'd like to beat your own times, but it's about the taking part and about the cumulative results. Uh, well, Cameron yesterday ran his 50th park run for the school. Now we do them once a week here, so you can probably work that out. That's virtually two years worth of turning up on every um, school Tuesday to run the park run. So very well done, Cameron. The first to get to 50, I'm sure there'll be others coming behind you, but a really brilliant achievement. Just a couple of days before you leave the school. Well done. On to house competitions for sport. And uh, Mr. Halls and Mrs. McDee set up um, a whole load of uh, activities on different days of the week. You were to do press ups, a two and a half K run on the Tuesday, which is obviously lined up with our park run, which happens on Tuesdays. On Wednesday, it was about cricket taps. On Thursday, there was doing the plank and on Friday a 15k cycle ride. And you all contributed back to Mr Hall so that he could top things up. Now the overall winner of, of that, and uh, if we were in the hall of course, by now you'd be doing a bit of a drum roll on the floor. Um, third for the House Sports Cup is Oldham. And actually it couldn't split the winners, so there are joint winners of this cup this term, and that is Whitby and Gibbs. So very well done to you. I've got one of the cups over here, so I haven't had all of the cups that we would normally hand out around me, but these four over my right shoulder are um, four of the bigger ones that are collective ones. And this one here is the, the Mark Irons Cup, and it's named after a chap who was director of sport here for 30 years. And what we do with this one is we hand it out once a year, 
and it's the cup that's given to the House that when you put all of the House competitions together throughout the year, go way back to September, whether it be tiddlywinks or cross-country running or the swimming, um, we put all of the competitions um, for sport into this one pot and add it up and we give it at the end of the year. Now, last year, Gibbs were the winners of this. The year before that, it was Oldham. And this year, by the time all of the numbers have been crunched, third are Oldham, second are Gibbs, and the winners of the Mark Irons Cup for this year are Bradfield. So very well done to Bradfield. Now, what else do we do here at school? We've been through all the extracurriculars from sport and of course we do some work. And uh, I don't tire of telling you that actually the work we do here is pretty much the core aspect. Um, it's important to work hard, to commit to your work, to try and be the best you can. To accept that you don't get it to begin with, but that's the whole point. You're going to work through it and get it again. Um, and I said at the beginning, we've been really impressed with the way in which you've engaged. But I think on top of that, we've been impressed about how much progress you've made, about how well we have been able to engage with you to improve your learning, to develop new concepts, to move you forward, not just to hold the pattern until we get back in September. I think the progress you have made with your work has been tremendous. That is credit to you, but of course it's credit to the skills of your teachers. So let's talk a little bit about the work. Um, Mr Morgan would like me to mention that we have had children enter the UKMT, that's the UK Junior Math Challenge um, uh, tests that they do. Some of the older children have done that, we've managed to do it online this year, but the certificates are not back yet, so we don't quite know the outcomes of that. But well done for those of you who took on that challenge. We're always pleased to see our mathematicians being stretched. Then all of the work you do, you know that you get merits for your work and HMCs. HMCs have gone through the roof this term. And I'm sure that's um, partly due to the fact that whilst we're away, we want to be able to reward you for your efforts. But it's also because your efforts have been significant. So I don't think we're going to have the number of HMCs uh, awarded um, that we have seen this term again in future terms. But it's a really fantastic collection. And the number of pens that have been leaving my office, my goodness, I'm going to have to restock very quickly. But the merits, we do tot up and then give, them, um, give you some sense of that at the end of each term. And uh, in year three and four, year five and six, and year seven and eight, we're going to make mention to those who have done well in each of the houses. So in year three and four in Bradfield, well done to Henry Day and James White, and the, the, the one with the most was Ginesh Ashok. In Gibbs, uh, well done to Francesca Lloyd and Wilbur Mack, and the one with the most was Xavier Lefrancois. In Oldham, well done to Maurice Spire, Molly Steedman, and the one with the most was Danning Zhang. And in Whitby, a well done to Felix Bennett, Zoe Salvage, and the one with the most was Alice Lang. In year five and six, <coughs> in Bradfield, well done to Joseph Osman, Rex Thomas, and the one with the most was Nick Dutoy. In uh, Gibbs, well done to Barney Mack, uh, Tilly Hulm, and the winner there was Frankie Rifford Whitehouse. In year five and six, well done to Toby Burrell and Adam Lowry, and the winner was Jack Perry. In Whitby, um, well done to Lulu Bell, Theo Lamy, and the winner was Grace Gomples. Moving on to the senior couple of years, um, in Bradfield, uh, well done to Darcy Coburn and Freddie Molden, and the winner was Monique Dutoy. In Gibbs, uh, well done to Wilf Gosling, Sid Dorse, and the winner Jago Barkley. In Oldham, well done to Sam Hawkins, Poppy Chedzoy, and the winner Charlotte Ambler. And in Whitby, well done to Isabel Noble, Henry Walter, and the winner was Kate Barker. Really nice to see a few names there of children who actually only joined us this term. And I've mentioned it before, but what an interesting way to start your time at King's Hall under this virtual circumstances. But those of you who have, my goodness, you've impressed us by your, your, your involvement from the off. So very well done. Another piece of uh, trophy over here. This is our merits shield. And this goes to the house um, with the best average on um, the merits through the term. Of course, there are slightly different numbers of children in each house, so it's not just a total. We divide it by the number of children in the house so that it's averaged out. Um, last year, this shield um, went to, so this time last year, last summer term, this shield went to Bradfield with an average of about 38 merits. And another example of how hard you've been working and the way in which the staff have wanted to reward you is that the averages here are, are, are more around the 50s rather than 38, which was the winning average last year. So third for this shield, all of the merits added together and then averaged out. The house merit shield for this term. Third is Oldham. Second is Whitby. And the winner of this, this term, is Gibbs. 
Very well done to Gibbs. Right, let's move on to pluses. So I don't know if you've noticed or you've picked up over the terms that we go through alphabetically, then we get down to the work, and then we end up with pluses. And uh, that, that's because we feel that the way in which you behave with each other, your kindness, your consideration, is just about the most important thing that we would like you to get right. At this stage, I would normally be handing out four um, spirit cups, one to each house, one particular person in each house, that the houses had got together and had decided that we would like to thank this person for their contribution to our house this term. We haven't really had house meetings, and so we, we felt that it wasn't appropriate to be able to do that. We couldn't really judge that. Uh, after doing the four house cups, we would then hand out a school spirits cup, and I have that here. So this is the school spirit cup, and each term we give this to a group of you who we feel have made a significant contribution to the atmosphere in the school, the well-being of the school, the happiness, the kindness within the school, those who have collectively made a contribution. We are going to give this because we as a staff have been able to sense um, collective contributions from various people. Um, so there are some shout-outs for this for Year 3 who have impressed with the way they've gone about their, their, their um, work and their activities. Uh, a shout out to 7S who have impressed virtually every teacher you've got there has been so pleased with your collective output. Um, to 7H, 7CE2, um, uh, another group that have worked really well. Um, but we think that the group who have collectively made the biggest difference to the whole school, even though we've been apart, the group that's made the biggest difference to the whole school experience this term has been the musicians who have collaborated to give us music in various ensembles, in our assemblies, in chapel, um, on VE Day, some individual performances. Um, so much time that you've put in that we don't see. Um, it's, it's a real joy that it brings to us. So to see you working for us when it comes to those touch points in the week, whether it be assemblies and chapel and the like, has really made a big difference to, to, to us being a part. So thank you very much to all of you musicians who keep practicing, who have taken time to record yourself and then share it with Mr. DJ so that we can all benefit. So the school spirit cup there. And then lastly, <coughs> this very big cup, and it's, I always say it's very appropriate that it's the biggest cup. This is the house plus cup. And again, this has been pretty hard to, um, to, to, to um, uh, judge, not, not judge this term, but it's done by numerical input of pluses. And of course this term, that's not been something that the staff have been able to give you very many of because we're not actually in your company. But we still thought we would take whatever data we do have and use it because this is a really important message to us all that collectively we look after each other. So the house plus cup, again, all of the pluses that you have got added up and then averaged out for each house. Um, last year it was Whitby, it was Bradfield the year before that. Um, this term, um, Whitby are in third place. Those are the current holders, Whitby in third. Second is Oldham. And the winner of the House Plus Cup for this term is Gibbs. Well done to Gibbs. <coughs> Not much chance for, for you to come down and collect it and raise it up high as you would normally. Now I'm going to move on to some thank yous as we come to the end of this term and, of course, the year. Um, I'm going to say thank you, as I normally do, to our heads and deputies. So thank you very much to Hayden Howe, our deputy head boy of this term, to Poppy Chedsoy, our deputy head girl, and to Gus Gompels and Daisy Thompson, who have been our head boy and girl, respectively. Uh, ordinarily, you'd be up here now, and I would be shaking your hand, and I would be saying, as we say goodbye to these four who have done a terrific job, we look forward to those who will stand in their place next term. Then I would announce the names of the four who are going to be next term's heads and deputies. Um, this time I have asked our current heads and deputies to do it for me. So hold on tight, we're about to go on a little journey from Somerset to um, Hong Kong and then to Scotland and then back to Somerset. Um, so why don't you start for us Poppy? Thank you Mr Chippendale. Next term's deputy head girl is going to be Robin Code. Now over to Hayden. Okay, Poppy. Well, next time that petty head boy is going to be Wilf Gosling. Let's go to Daisy now. Got it, Hayden. I'll be glad to let you all know that this time's head girl is Gracie Kirst. Finally, let's hear from Gus. Perfect. Thanks very much, Daisy. And the final one to announce is that this time's head boy will be Zach Bakuzic. Congratulations. Back to you, Mr. Chippendale. So there you go. Thank you guys. I think that worked and I'm pretty sure you got the message well done. Um, but just to be clear in case you didn't pick it up, 
Next term's deputy head girl is to be Robin Code. Uh, the deputy head boy will be Wilf Gosling. And next term, our head girl will be Grace Ekerst, and the head boy will be Zach McCusich. Uh, just as Gus said there, congratulations to you all. On to some farewells. Now, of course, we have year eight moving on, and there are a few others leaving us as well. And my message to you uh, moving on is quite simple. Represent King's Hall with pride and be confident in who you are. Give everything a go. You do have great qualities inside you. You are amazing and you can do amazing things. Get out there and live your life to the full and be, be, be as proud of who you are as we are as you move on. We also need to say goodbye to two staff in the prep. Um, I will be mentioning them on Prize Day, but if we were in the Arts Centre, we'd be taking the chance to say goodbye from, from, from you children as well. So for the moment, a very simple but heartfelt thank you and goodbye to Mr Mackenzie Green for his history teaching and the enjoyment that he's brought to many of you through the likes of the tribe and his work as a tutor, and to Mr Hayden, who has inspired so many in the labs with his coolness. I know that there is this subtext of you being Ed Sheeran. Uh, we will miss you. Um, I'm not sure I've seen your guitar out very often, but we will miss you. Um, so both of you, we wish you well as you move on and hope that you'll return to see us in the days and months ahead. Uh, and my final summary would be um, thanks to your teachers as well. Again, if we were in the Arts Centre, I'd ask you to look around the room and just to take in those who have been uh, looking after you. Um, think about all the things that they have done to guide, support and nudge you um, as you have been stretching yourself this term. Um, it's been harder, but I think the connections have been no less, uh, no less significant and um, real. I think your teachers have done a fantastic job in, in supporting you and drawing the best out of you. This term, of course, we also have to look around our own homes and not just the Arts Centre, um, because thanks has to include your fabulous parents. I talked about fabulous teachers. Um, but your parents have in many cases become teachers this term. Um, you children have been remarkable, but it wouldn't be possible without your teachers or the support of your parents, so we mustn't forget to thank them. Please do so uh, when you get the chance. Um, so many people can be very proud of, uh, of, of many achievements this term, but I think it's also true to say that even without knowing it, you've gained other skills and learned so much from the experience of this term. I'm sure you'll remember it for the rest of your life. I'm sure you'll remember how it felt, and I'm sure you'll remember the times that you weren't able to go out and about. But I also know that the lessons you have learned have now become a part of you for the rest of your life, as well as the way it felt. You will be stronger for it. You will have innate um, abilities to, uh, to, to, to be more resilient to various things, even in just the smallest way. This experience will live with you for the rest of your life. When we come back next term, we are expecting to have all children back here with us, but it is, um, it, it is likely that there will need to be some adjustments in the way in which we go through our normal routines and rhythms. We're terribly excited about having you all back here. Having a few year groups back has reminded us how important it is that we actually see and meet and greet each other and share each other's company. There's that visceral interaction between us that cannot be replaced um, unless you're in, in each other's company. So we're excited about that. But please be aware that there may be some adjustments that we need to make. So we're very excited about it. We just need to remember that there's still probably a bit of a journey to be had as we work through coronavirus impacts. Um, we'll let you know more about what September is going to be like when the time is right. Don't worry about it now. It is time to go and have a rest. You've done terrifically well. Summer holidays, chance to recharge. Look ahead to the exciting doors, as I mentioned on Monday, the exciting doors that you will be opening uh, in September. Um, so don't worry about what it's going to be like now. Get some rest. We on Friday will enjoy prize giving as the final act of this year. The evening before will be the concert. Um, but for now, very well done to all you have given to us this term. And uh, let's end this assembly um, with uh, a prayer. We're going to go for prayer 14 in our books. So our prayer to end this term. Let us say together. Lord, we commend to your loving care and guidance those who are leaving school this term. Be with them as they go forward into their new life. May their path lead to success and self-fulfilment. Amen. <laughs>